20 years ago, Artman made a big mistake. With the release of their first feature animation, they awoke a ghastly creature. That being the spawn of chicken and plushies. <laughs> Anyway, the original Chicken Run movie is pretty good, so let's talk about that one. In the lead up to the release of Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, three work prints of the original film have found their way online. The third one is just mainly the finalised movie. Oh, my life flashed before my eyes. It was really boring. But the earlier two are far more fascinating. They feature some alternative scenes from the final movie, but as well some deleted content that you can't find anywhere on the home media releases. So for a bit of fun, we're going to break down to see what exactly is different from these work prints to the final flick, and as well discuss some deleted scenes that have not yet found their way to the wider public. As well, a whole hour's worth of Chicken Run test animation has found its way online as well. So in this program, I shall be peppering in a few clips from those reels. And remember, if this sounds like your cup of tea and you want to see more videos just like this one, then subscribing would be very much appreciated. Alright, enough of the context, let's crack in. The work print starts not with the moon, but instead with an extra couple of seconds of the crane shot over the chicken plantation. This soundbite from Bunty when she's stuck isn't present in the film. Ginger originally reacted to the situation with concern, although this shot ended up getting reanimated with Ginger rolling her eyes with fatigue. The opening montage of the chickens trying to make their escape is mostly the same in the final film, with the exception of when they're trying to dress up as Mrs. Tweedy, where the shots were slightly trim and reordered for the final film. <laughs> Edwina's death scene, who is the only character to die in the film, was re-edited in the movie to come across more gentle, where in the initial work prints of the film, while nothing graphically is shown, they were certainly edited to be a bit more punchy, with a couple of extra seconds being exclusive to these versions. The scene with Nick and Fetcher bartering with Ginger is mostly the same, although it's cut a little short when they find out that Ginger isn't willing to hand over any eggs. We're making this. We need these things. Can you get them? We can get anything, darling, but not for that chicken feed you call pie. All we have is chicken feed. Although in the final film, it's prolonged with visuals. Nick being handed the chicken feed, which is what the chickens are willing to offer, and Fetcher holding up an egg cup. On the topic of Fetcher, we lose this deleted line from the work print. What else could we give you? Eggs. Eggs? Eggs. Is there an echo in here? However, in the final film, they included this additional line to show on how thick Fetcher really is. After you, Fetcher. After I what? Move! <laughs> from the second, more finalised work print, we get this deleted line from Ginger saying what? But it's so brief and happens near towards the end of the scene that I kind of wonder if the line was some sort of editing mistake. After I what? Move! Wait. The scene with Mr. Tweedy looking on with his binoculars was just so slightly edited and trimmed to make it feel more tighter. They're organised, I know it. I said quiet. Ginger one, I reckon she's their leader. Mr. Tweedy! <gasps> as well, they moved around the shot of Ginger sneakily returning back to the chicken hut to instead be a POV of Mr. Tweedy looking through his binoculars. In the final movie, the clucking that was supplied from the phony chicken was from director Nick Park. Just before we get the montage of the hens warming up to fly, this wide shot of all the ladies in the coop was instead replaced in the final film with a close-up of Ginger looking a bit doubtful. As for that said montage, they play the music straighten up and fly right. There's a couple of storyboard shots that didn't show up in the film, such as when Rocky is cringing at his broken wing. He gives a little smile and wave to the concerned hens, with Ginger being a wee bit suspicious. We still get a montage of the hens trying to fly, although in the work print it was still only a rough storyboard, with moments and sight gags that aren't in the final film. And as well, the dialogue between Nick and Fetcher is different. 
Flipping hell, what's this gaper? I don't know. Let's take a gander. They're gonna kill themselves. Wanna watch? Yeah, all right. We also never got this reaction shot of Mr. Tweedy being completely bewildered of the hens trying and failing to fly. In the initial designs for Rocky, he was meant to have a wattle just like Fowler, and his first animated scene being in bed with Fowler, Rocky was animated with this design wattle in place. However, the wattle was soon rid away with, and instead of reanimating that scene between Rocky and Fowler, the wattle was digitally removed. This animation shot of the lantern is exclusive in the earliest available work print. Think, everyone, think. The dialogue with Ginger trying to get the hens to imagine a better place to live was rewritten for the film, and we also miss out on this deleted line from Babs. Fences aren't just round the farm, they're up here, in your heads. Don't you realise there's a whole world out there? You mean all the chicken farms? I mean, freedom. During the scene where Rocky is bartering with the rats, in the final movie, Nick the Rat was given seven extra lines when the two buddy rats are walking off. Oh, I'm brewing one up as we speak, guys. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Pleasure doing business with you, sir. Sucker. Just prior to the dance sequence where Nick and Fetcher hand over a radio, Fetcher is having a bit of trouble with the dial on the side. That's biblical. Where in the movie, the dial flies out, and Fetcher, being the con artist, tries to smooth it over. Unconvincingly. Ooh, it's supposed to do that. And the music for the dance sequence would have came to its end after the radio had fell over. <laughs> Where Ginger is hooked up on the machine in the work print she clucks. <laughs> this isn't heard in the final film. Rocky shooting down into the dough, we've got a couple of alternative shots. <laughs> Get it? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. A minor shot that's not included in the final movie is where we see this meter for the gravy pressure. <laughs> also, it's been really fascinating watching the second work print, getting to see some of the original animation shots before they had CGI appliances. It's quite balmy on how minute some of the digital details are. Like, did you know that the dripping gravy from the pie was actually digital CGI? It's also fascinating to see from the second work print on how they were playing around in the edit suite, like visually removing on when the hens discover that Rocky's a fraud. Mm, I can Aye, that would give you thrust. Mm, I can Aye, that would give you thrust. As Ginger puts the final escape plan in action, from the storyboards we would have had this reaction shot from Bunty instead. When Nick and Fetcher are finally roped into the action, the final film added more additional dialogue to the two rats. Eggs! One egg for every item on the list. First payment in advance. Right, when, when do, do we, we start? start? Following shots that were deleted from the final film was this POV shot of the rats within the gnomes. Then the rats sneaking past the dogs via wellies. They would have been carrying all the equipment they were sneaking to the chickens via the wellies, but it was changed to be the gnomes in the final film. A deleted scene that can only be seen via the work print, we can see where Rocky got the small tricycle from by tripping up a child. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because he was sick of walking! Mum! This line for Mrs. Tweedy was deleted out from the film. Haven't you fixed that machine yet? I did. Look! as well as these small trims of animations from Mr. Tweedy. This quip from Mrs. Tweedy originally had a much more softer line delivery. Finally, something we agree on. When Ginger announces to the hens that they're going to finally make their grand escape, some lines were either trimmed, deleted, Push him now! Lift it up! Or just simply rearranged. Ginger, she's not ready. We need to run tests. There's no time! But Ginger, she's not ready. We need to listen. On board the aircraft, instead of Nick and Fetcher doing a safety warning, between your knees and kiss your bum goodbye. The two rats were instead trying to flog and sell stuff. 
Duty free. Sickness bag. Flight insurance. Parachute. A deleted very small line of Fowler saying, but. Fowler, you have to fly it. What? You're always talking about back in your day. Well, today is your day. And a shot showing that Mr. Tweedy is no longer under the chicken coop. Looking at the earliest available work print of the film, it appears that a lot of the initial animation for the aircraft was redone for the final movie. From the storyboards, Mrs. Tweedy would have tried to stop Ginger via a shotgun near towards the climax of the film, although this would be replaced with an axe for the final film. But there were some early test animations with Tweedy and the gun. Rocky knocking out Mrs. Tweedy is just edited to be slightly shortened in the final film, as well they trimmed out some extra animation shots with Ginger. Now the ending is pretty interesting, as it appears that the finale went through major revisions. In the earliest available work print to watch, the chickens fly back round to the farm to drop Mrs. Tweedy off. Rocky's up with Fowler trying to help him to steer the aircraft, and Ginger's on her own trying to use a hacksaw to break the wire that Mrs. Tweedy is clinging onto. But it's using bad scissors that finally breaks the wire through. Some of the dialogue is as well reworked for the final film. Velocity! What does that mean? It means head on your flipping giblets out! Increase velocity! What does that mean? It means head on your flipping giblets out! Now, as for the second available work print, it's virtually the same as the finale in the final film. Minor differences include alternative lines. Lower! Can't go any lower! And in the final shot of Mrs. Tweedy, it's not a door that falls on top of her. Instead, it's a brick that drops on her head. It's also interesting to see that in these early storyboard versions of the ending, we would have visually have seen Rocky and Ginger kiss on screen. However, the way that it's framed in the final film, we don't quite see both their peckers meeting. According to the audio commentary, the directors felt that this may have looked visually weird on screen. The first two original work prints both have slightly different endings. The first one sees the chickens on their new island home are playing cricket. This line from Babs. This is a lovely holiday. I'll be sad to go back. Was later repurposed to be used for the final film. This is a lovely holiday. I'll be sad to go back. In the second rendition of the ending, it appears that the chickens have just landed on the remote island as they all walk out the plane frolicking in their new freedom. In the actual film, a third ending was finalised, where we get to see the chickens fully set up in their new home. But there are two things that all three of these endings have in common. This dialogue exchange between Rocky and Ginger. So, is it as good as you imagine? No, it's better. <laughs> and the dialogue between Nick and Fetcher of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Originally, a whole five-minute dialogue exchange was recorded, and in the work print we get 17 extra seconds of Nick and Fetcher bickering amongst one another. And there we have it, those are all the major differences between the work print and the final film. Although, going by the audio commentary of the film, directors Peter Lord and Nick Park mention additional deleted scenes that can't be seen in either the work print or anywhere else. For example, during the testing of the pie-making machine, is where Rocky would have came across the skeletal remains of a chicken, adding a quip that the Tweedies were so cheap that they had to use an old used machine. The circus man was meant to have a much more bigger role, where in the original early versions of the story he would have had two to three speeches. An American actor by the name of John Sherrod, who initially was helping with the production with cast readings, but then got lucky enough to be cast in the actual film playing the role of the circus man. His biggest moment would have been during a flashback sequence, where we would have seen Rocky being loaded up into the cannon. But unfortunately for Mr. Sherrod, his role got reduced in the film, and only utters one line in the movie. He's valuable, you say? Sure. Get the torch. And unfortunately for us, the flashback sequence isn't in any of the available work prints. Prior to Rocky running away, originally when Ginger and Rocky had a small moment together, Rocky was meant to open up much more talking about his childhood and his dad. Additionally, Nick Park mentions on how there was a superb reaction shot from Mr. Tweedy before the door falls on Mrs. Tweedy. Mr. 
Does Ginger still say, I'll show you my googly or something? As they go she down she the does. Hill? We fade out before she gets oh, there, right. but she did say that. Educate the Americans about cricket. But... <laughs> One small plot hole that I was hoping that the word prints were going to answer, but sadly there's no such deleted scene that turns up to explain this. Who was the one to father all the chicks at the end? Was old Fowler able to plant the seed? Or was Rocky unfaithful to Ginger? A group of rather desperate chickens. You see, if it is you, then you just might be the answer to our prayers. 